Okay, Nitaniku Enkki. Hello, my name is Grant Manyheads, and I'm one of the interpreters here at Blackford Crossing Historical Park. And today we're going to be talking about Blackfoot teepees. In Blackfoot, we would say Nitois, the Blackfoot teepee. Oh, okay. Uh, just give us one second to remedy that. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay, great. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Welcome. Okay. Nitaniku Enkki. My name is Grant Manyheads, and I'm one of the interpreters here at Blackfoot Crossing Historical Park. And today, we're going to talk about Blackfoot teepees. In the Blackfoot language, we would say nitois. Basically, that just translates to uh, our home, the lodge the lodge itself. So let's look at the next picture. Now this is an image of a Blackfoot teepee. Now the Blackfoot teepees were unique compared to other tribes as to how they set up their teepees. And there's actually only three tribes in North America that used four poles as a base to put up their teepees. And the Blackfoot people, the Crow, and the Tsutina people were the only tribes that we know of that used four poles to put up their teepees. So if you look at that image, you could see the Blackfoot teepee. The way it's tied is actually right there. The Blackfoot used four poles to put up our teepees. Most of the other tribes used three. So you kind of could see that in this image here. And of course our teepees in those days were made of buffalo hide. So you can kind of see how the buffalo hides were stitched together to make the, the lodge covering for the teepee. But it's very important to note as I mentioned, that the Blackfoot used four poles when they put up their teepees. To the Blackfoot, four is a sacred number. So it's our belief that it was our people who actually invented this teepee. And over the years, it evolved, adapted, and became the actually the best type of dwelling to live in because you could put your fire inside and during times of blizzard or bad weather your teepee would keep you warm and safe. So I want to point that out for all of you who are listening. Here's a couple of more pictures sort of like how the teepee set up. As soon as you stepped in the teepee came in through the door right across would be the owner's spot in the teepee on the other side of the fire and then his family would be on one side and his guests he would receive on the other side of the teepee but basically there was a central hearth or a fire that was in the middle of these teepees and as you notice in the one illustration there there's actually a rope that drops down from the top and that's a guy line and they would use that and use an anchor, either a branch that was sharpened at the bottom, and they would hammer that in to keep the teepee secure. So even in, in times of high winds, the teepee would stay in place and hopefully not blow over. And Blackfoot teepees, I hear, didn't blow over because they're actually kind of a 
stretched out, covered more ground, and because they had the four poles, they were more stable. So we can uh, look at the next image. As I mentioned before, the teepees were originally made out of buffalo skins. So this is how they would kind of put the buffalo skins to each other and how they would stitch it. Now in the dog days, our teepees were much smaller. So if you look at that image, it was probably less skins, maybe five to 12 to make our dwellings. And when the horse came, these dwellings got much larger. And in the dog days, the skin teepee cover was probably the heaviest possession that the Blackwood would own. And so this would be folded nicely, neatly, and put on the back of a dog travois to move from one place to the other. And then as the teepees got larger, they would fold them and neatly put them on the back of a horse travois and move that teepee from one camp to the other. I uh, would look at the next image. Oh, we have a question. N or M? That's awesome. Is it a Blackfoot teepee? That's great. Let's get into how we can identify a Blackfoot teepee. Right now, we're looking at a picture of women erecting a teepee. And traditionally, this was the woman's, I wouldn't say job, but the way my grandmother explained it to me is no woman in her right mind would allow a man to put up the family dwelling. You might make mistakes. So the women made sure that the home was secure and put up properly. And this was, like I mentioned, our mothers and our grandmothers invention. So they took a lot of pride when it came to putting up and putting together these teepee covers and even selecting the teepee poles. Now the teepee poles are lodgepole pine because they're straight. And this is what the Blackfoot would use to put up our teepees, to use for our teepee frame. If we go on to the next image, you could look at the colors of the teepees in this picture. Now, this is what Blackfoot teepees were known for. The Blackfoot teepees, the painted teepees, always followed a sort of motif. If you look at the bottom of the teepee, it kind of told you where these people live. Now these Blackfoot people in this picture would be Bigani because if you look at the bottom of that teepee, there's peaks, they're pointed, and that means mountains. And then you have the puff balls, those white uh, circles, part of that bottom picture. Well, these are puff balls and these are a part of our Blackfoot legends and stories. And most Blackfoot teepees would have these puff balls at the bottom design. Now, if we move on, we'll take, we'll go back to some of these teepee designs, but let's look at the teepee liners. Now these teepee liners make everything look pretty, but there's actually a purpose to these. Now, the wind coming from the outside in the teepee would actually travel up these teepee liners. And when you had a fire burning inside your teepee, that wind going up and out would take the smoke out of the teepee through the smoke flaps. So the TP liner acted as an insulator. It kept the people warm inside and also it kind of kept 
the people's activity private because you couldn't see what they're actually doing in the teepee because the teepee liners would kind of stop the shadows from being shown on the outside of the teepee. So this is a basic setup of a teepee. The interior, as I mentioned, there's a central hearth, meaning a fireplace. And then on the owner's side, on the west side of the fire, sometimes there was an altar that the owner would use for prayers. And the Blackfoot teepees, the door always faced east. So whenever a Blackfoot camp set up, all the doors of every teepee would be facing east. Now, if you look in the one picture there, there's actually like the sleeping areas. So you could see as you came into the entrance, right across, as I mentioned, were the owners of the teepee. That would be their sitting and sleeping area. And then the rest of the family would have places around the teepee to sleep. Now, if uh, we look at, this is sort of an interior view of our uh, teepees. And you could see kind of how they would have been set up. The person's belongings would be hanging from different poles. And as I mentioned, their sleeping areas for family, for guests. And you'd have your wood pile and fuel that you could place between the teepee skin cover and the liner on the inside you could use for storage. Ah, let's look at a next picture here. Now these are backrests. These are basically like your lazy boy chairs. But this is what the Blackfoot would use to sit. If they were uh, doing work or wanting to rest, you could use these TP tripods and set them up in, in uh, however you wanted to, to make yourself comfortable. So these acted as dividers between sleeping areas and as I mentioned, as like couches, something to lean against and uh, you could work. Willow backrests, as I mentioned, were a part of most tribes. Uh, teepees and you could see how they use them in some of these images. And just as you look at some of these pictures, just uh, you can imagine how big the teepees are because even in this photo this is only probably a quarter of the lodge and they already have like six men sitting in the one spot. So some teepees were huge. They, they could go anywhere from like 16 foot in the horse days to 30 feet. And when I mean 30 feet, that means 30 foot high and a 30 foot diameter at the bottom. So that was a huge space. So these teepees were actually pretty homey. It kept the people warm and everything was designed to be portable. And if you notice that in the setup with the backrests, those things can roll up. You can put them on the back of a horse. Uh, let's take a look at the next image. These are some of the interior image, sorry. Oh, okay, Beth, you have a question? Hello. Oh, I think you're muted, Beth. Oh, that's great. Okay, so we're just looking at some images of TP interiors. Now I just kind of want to point out about Blackfoot teepees is we are talking about the designs. 
Um, I just wanted to show you with this little teepee. Now Blackfoot teepees weren't all painted. The majority of teepees were actually just plain. The painted teepees were a lot like sacred bundles and painted teepees have rules or taboos. So there are things that you can and can do when you go into these painted teepees. Now a painted teepee, as I mentioned, was like a bundle. So it had power or medicine which the tribe believed would help them. So there wasn't a lot of painted teepees but there would be a lot of painted teepees in a big village of teepees. But the majority of those teepees, as I mentioned, would be just plain. Now on painted teepees, you'll notice the smoke flaps. While on Blackfoot teepees, these stars on the smoke flaps are very much Blackfoot, because these tell origin stories, basically how to look after our children. We have the neglected children, which is represented by the Pleiades system, which is on the teepee flap. And then on the other side is the seven uh, brothers, which is also a Blackfoot story. And that's represented by the Big Dipper, as we call it today. But in those days, those were the seven brothers. And these stories of children are on our smoke flaps. And we're the only tribe that has those sort of decoration or those images on our smoke flaps. And for that reason, if you're going to have a teepee and have a family, well, these are reminders to look after your children because our children are important. So, painted teepees had these images on them. But also, there was a lot of other images that people put on their teepee that they would explain what those images mean. But as I mentioned, on Blackfoot teepees, we have a certain motif. If you look at the bottom, you can tell what type of black, like in the one image, you, you can tell that they lived near the mountains, the Rocky Mountains. If you look at the teepees that have a rounded part, that means they lived in the foothills. And if the bottom part was flat, like on this teepee, this would basically mean you live on the plains. And if there was the odd hill spaced apart, a rounded part, that means you could have been living in any number of the hill, hilly places, like the Hand Hills, like the Buffalo Hills, like the Bear Hills, any of these different places that our people used to camp. They would let other Blackfoot know by the bottom image. Now the central image of the teepee is basically here on earth, like spirit helpers or some animal or creature that was a helper to that person and told them to make that teepee, then they would put that image on the teepee. And the top part of the teepees always represented the sky or the heavens. And this is where they would put the images such as rainbows, uh, snowstorms, things of that nature. So that's just basically a rough kind of guideline when you look at Blackfoot teepees. But they all kind of have that same motif as far as design when it comes to painted teepees. So let's look at the next image here. Okay, these are some more teepee interior shots. Let's go to the next one. So if there's any of you out there who have any questions at this point,
please feel free to ask. And this is a program we're still developing. So in the uh, days, weeks to come, we'll be talking about a little bit uh, more details, especially when we get some questions from your listeners. Okay, so in this image, you could see the different types of teepees that could be in a camp, a teepee camp 200 years ago. You could see that there are, are plain teepees. You see there are teepees at the bottom that have the pointy, the mountain peaks. Could we enlarge that image? Now, if we look at that image, as I mentioned, there's three types of bottom motifs. Some are flat. Those are, how would you say, six ones because we were plains people. And then if you look at some of them with the pointed peaks, those are mountain. So that would be mostly Bikani. Bikani tribes would have that sort of uh, symbols. And the blood tribes who were mostly in the foothills you could see their teepees would be the bottom motif that has the rounded uh, hilly parts. So just by looking at the teepee itself, 200 years ago, anybody from a native tribe would know that this is a Blackfoot camp just because of how the teepees were designed. And other Blackfoot going to visit other Blackfoot, by looking at the teepee, they'd be able to identify whether or not that was a Blackfoot camp. So you could see those images all in this picture as well. This was like uh, maybe before the signing of our treaty, but you could see that there are all sorts of Blackfoot camped in this camp. There's six egg ones who usually had the flat bottom motif. And then you could also see that there's the foothills motif, which was the Gaina, and the mountain motif, which was mostly Bikani. So this is just setting up a teepee camp. And as I mentioned, the, tri the, the smaller tripods is where they would hang uh, the sacred bundles or holy items outside of the teepee. And then they would always bring these back into the home when the weather started to get bad or if it got dark. So I'm looking for any sort of questions at this time. And you know, uh, that last picture, can we actually go back to the last picture there? Uh, there was actually a circle camp. Yeah, right there. Now this was a rarity. The Blackfoot didn't always camp in a circle. We usually camped in uh, s small groups, but when we did camp in a circle, it was when the entire tribe, or most of it, when we assembled, usually for the oak gone. But that was the only time that we would have a circle camp. Move on to the next image. Okay. On the top of this teepee, it's actually facing west. And what you could see is like a cross image. Well, that's not actually a, a cross. What it is, it represents the butterfly. And much like a dream catcher among some other tribes, this was supposed to keep bad things out of your home and only allow good things 
to come into the lodge. So it was like our protection. Here we can see a Blackfoot camp camped along the riverside. As I mentioned, a lot of our teepees were plain. A lot of the Blackfoot camped in just plain teepees. It was only the painted teepees that had power and they were special and unique to that particular camp. So if we move on to the next image, here we can see Foothills design and this most probably would have been from the Gaina tribe because that's where they pretty much lived in ancient times. So you could see here a lady working on a hide. And usually when our women, when they were putting together a new teepee, it wasn't just one person. It was like a sewing bee. There would have been a lot of older, wizened ladies that know how to do it, teaching a lot of younger women how to make teepees. And that's pretty much how they would work to get teepees sewn and fitted for the entire tribe. Oh, and this is just another type of dwelling. This was a Blackfoot War Lodge. This was made out of poles. It would have been about the size of a 12, 14 foot teepee. And the way it was built, it probably could sleep a war party of a nine to 20 people. It was a special design. They actually found these, uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition found a bunch of these types of lodges. And they thought that our Blackfoot people lived in these type of dwellings. But then they soon learned that these were war lodges, temporary dwellings the Blackfoot used in enemy country where we could scout and scope out the enemy and find out when we could steal their horses and flee back to the homelands. <laughs> but that's what these were. But other than this, I'll leave it open to the viewers out there if you have any questions at this time. I imagine there must be some questions regarding Blackfoot teepee. Okay, I just kind of want to mention again, Blackfoot teepees are unique in the sense that we use four poles to put up our teepees and other tribes use three. And so that's kind of, a, it does make a big difference when it comes to setting up. And as far as questions as to when we first started using teepees, we probably have to go back to our distant past. Uh, because we were a buffalo people, I think we were always using buffalo skins as our dwellings. Yes, we have a question. We have a question. Uh, which teepees are you talking about? Sorry. Oh yeah, um, the images. Yeah, these are Blackfoot teepees. Okay. Oh, that's actually a good question. You know, the Blackfoot lands, our traditional territory, started from the Rocky Mountains all the way east to the Kapow Valley and Touchwood Hills in Saskatchewan. So that's about 300 or so miles from the mountains. 
And then from the North Saskatchewan River, where present day Edmonton is, all the way south to the Yellowstone River in Montana, USA. Well, this was a huge territory. And this is what the Blackfoot considered our ancestral territory, because this is where the buffalo went, and we followed the buffalo. So the buffalo defined our territory. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, much of our land was in the mountains, a lot of our land was in the foothills, and a lot of our land was on the plains. And when you look at the Blackfoot teepees, as I mentioned, if you look at the bottom, that'll tell you where those people lived. So if it's pointy, that means those people lived in the mountains or along the mountains. If those people's teepees were rounded, like foothills, then that meant that those people lived in the foothills. And if it was flat, then that meant that those people lived on the plains. And so there were so many Blackfoot back then, in the dog days, let's say, 1600s, 1700s, that our people were spread out all over our territory. And the reason we'd be able to know where our cousins come from is by how they painted their teepees. So we'd know that they were Blackfoot. So hopefully that helped a little. Uh, yeah. Well, you should, yeah, well, your wife or your family, daughters, they would be on your right side if you were sitting across from the door. And then your guests, our people you invited, would actually sit on your left side. I believe that's correct. Okay. I've heard that as well. To tell you the truth, you probably have to talk to uh, one of our ceremonialists if you want to get the true story behind some of these symbols and designs that they have on teepees. Because every teepee is a little different than another teepee. So I always find that if you want to get clear answers, it's best to ask the person who owns that teepee because they know what everything is supposed to be. Sorry? This one is from Angela Richmond. Are there any books available that show how to construct these d dwellings? So there are books out there but the honest truth, I don't think you'd really know how to put up a teepee until you actually put up a teepee with people who know how to set it up because there's a lot of ties, things involved that, bu that books don't really talk about. And yeah, so honestly, I would say once we open again, come out when we have a teepee raising and then you could see how we put the poles together, how we set it up, how we set up the other poles before we put the teepee covering on. Um, it's possible that we're going to have that sort of information for you in the near future here. Uh, we're looking at doing virtual reality, uh, teepee raising, among other things. So stay tuned with us and we'll probably be able to uh, provide you with that kind of information. 
So do we have any more questions from the floor? This one is also from Facebook. Okay. Um, it says, it's adding on to the question, and resources on these motifs on the teepees? Any books available? Um, as far as books available for teepees, I can't think of any one particular book at the moment that has these explanations. This is actually something that we've been doing at Blackford Crossing Historical Park, is gathering information from different sources to put this program together. So if I can find a book like that, I'll definitely let you, the audience, know. Okay. Oh, okay. And for those of you who are listening on Facebook. Oh, register. For all of you who are on our social platform, uh, Facebook, Twitter, please register. And uh, we'll be able to get you these programs. So do we have any more questions from the audience out there on anything, anything at all? Okay, I guess with that, I'll say Gaita Matsin, but please come back, tell your friends, have more people join in and we'll be giving you a lot more information in the days and weeks to come.